Hey Andrew Fishman here, welcome to another video. It is time to start the ammonium chloride experiments, and by that I mean I'm going to test which filter type, either a box filter, undergrowl filter, a sponge filter, hob, and possibly others as this progresses, is better at removing a specific amount of ammonia, in this case ammonium chloride, uh, from an aquarium, uh, this one here. So I'm going to do, uh, to start off, is I'm going to uh, take all the plants out, take the carbon filter that's on this off, and uh, once all the life is out of it, I am going to uh, scrub it down first and drain it. And then I'm going to hit it with uh, concentrated vinegar. I'm not going to use anything harsher. So it's not really going to sterilize the tank, but it will definitely uh, reduce the bacteria load in here uh, quite a bit. And then I'm going to rinse that, uh, scrub it some more, uh, rinse it some more and uh, eventually we'll get to the point where I'm satisfied that it's clean enough and uh, then what I'm going to do is fill it up and uh, run air on it for a length of time that I know or at least what I'm going to test anyway but I'm going to try and make sure that there isn't any of the ammonia which is in the feed for um, our particular water source here uh, we use uh, not just chlorine in it it is chloramine uh, so I'm going to make sure that's gone, uh, make sure that's uh, been removed, and then I'm going to dose it with a specific amount of ammonium chloride, uh, test that to make sure I know what the starting levels are, and then I am going to add the first filter, which in this case is going to be the box filter. I have one that's been in an aquarium now for quite some time. So the biomedia should be uh, fully cultured, and like I said, it's, it's a nice mature filter, and that is going to be added and that is going to be my zero point and then at regular intervals after that I'm going to test for ammonia and I'm going to test for ammonia or continue to test for ammonia I should say until it reaches zero and that is going to be my benchmark so this is going to be the filter that everyone else is going to be compared to uh, like I said once I once I finish this one I will again uh, scrub this tank out uh, hit it with vinegar, rinse, and all that. The same thing you're seeing here right now. I probably won't scrub as much because it is quite clean, but I suspect when I put the box filter in, because it is mature, uh, some of the material that's in it is going to get into the tank, and I want to make sure that's out. So that's, like I said, there you go. That is how this is all going to run. And as always with any experiment, uh, especially one where uh, you think you have certain things that might happen, I had my preconceived notions, and that was that I thought this was going to go fairly quickly, and so I set my initial increments as close as I could get it. So I timed how long it takes to do a test, and it is just a little under three minutes, because there's two minutes at which the thing needs to develop before I can uh, check its color, uh, color, and so I timed it, and I could get it done in under three. So I was going to do uh, the zero mark, which is actually before I put the filter in. Uh, and once I start, once the filter went in, I was going to do it at three minute increments until the uh, the ammonia was gone. And the funny thing about that is, I should have known better because every filter, I don't care how long it's been in an aquarium, it will only maintain a certain amount of culture on it, and that is based on how much food you're giving to the tank. Uh, how much the fish uh, poop out, and how much, of course, passes through the filter. And if you take any one of these aquariums here and measure for ammonia, you're going to get a zero reading. That's not because there isn't any ammonia that is going through the system. It is very transient. In other words, it's not in there long enough for you to take a sample of water out and measure it and find it. So when I first started this experiment, I read the bottle and they recommended that you put a certain amount in and that amount ended up being uh, what would give the max reading on an ammonia test. And I said, oh, that's actually kind of cool because uh, that way I can see as it gradually uh, decreased and that, I thought that was a really kind of an interesting way of going about it. So that's what I did. Now there's a number of problems with that because the filter itself doesn't have the kind of culture on it that is going to be able to handle that much ammonia. So like I said, I started off at three minute increments and uh, gradually after about half hour, I was realizing that 
this is not working. <laughs> not in the sense that it's not going to go down at all. I wasn't worried about that. But I was going through an awful lot of tests, uh, uh, well, the bottle, the, a lot of drops. And I was going to end up running out before I got anywhere near the end of this thing. And there's a couple other things I want to point out as this progresses too, but that was the first thing that came up. So I started uh, switching that to every half hour and then, uh, like I said, doing it that, that way. And in the end, by the end of this, uh, I got up to an hour and uh, it's still, like I said, you'll see the tests. It's coming up shortly now. It was uh, not going at the speed I thought it would when I first thought about doing this experiment. But now that I'm thinking about it in hindsight, it makes perfect sense. Uh, this is an awful lot more ammonia than the filter is actually ever going to see. Now, that doesn't mean the filter, uh, sorry, the experiment is invalid. It just means, like I said, I was, I was expecting a little too much to begin with. And this is going to be an interesting progression on this experiment because I am going to keep the uh, protocols for it all the same. And then we're going to see how the other filters do, of course. And <laughs> like the funny thing is, it's not going to be what I initially started out to be, but that's perfectly fine because uh, experiments in general will be the way they're going to be. So we're actually getting up to the point now where I'm going to start the experiment, and that'll be when I take the initial readings, but first I'm going to uh, bubble a bunch of air in here. I started off with an air stone, and then I took that off because I wanted a lot more turbulence. I wanted to drive off uh, the chloramine as quickly as possible so I can actually get to the testing. And then uh, I took the reading, which is on the left. Uh, you can see it's nice and clear. There's nothing in there. And then I added the chloramine, let that uh, stir around for a few moments. And then that got the reading on the right. Now, this is actually one of the, st this is the start of the next problem I had with this experiment. And that is these test containers, that test vial, is not designed for taking consecutive readings of high ammonia. And you'll see why in a little bit. But first I'm going to add the filter here. Uh, that all went in with no problem whatsoever. Uh, and like I said, I started doing the readings. And then I noticed after about uh, 15 to 20 minutes, it was starting to look odd. And what that was, uh, the test file is not, like I said, not designed for taking these higher readings apparently. It ended up coloring the vial. It got stained uh, pretty much like if it were at the maximum amount of uh, chlorine. So I started trying to clean that out. And uh, this is just actual tank water. I tried to wipe it out. I mean, it only had a few moments in between each test. So uh, it was uh, unfortunately not long enough. So I switched over to using uh, a glass test tube instead. And then I had to work out whole new protocols for filming that, as you can see, because... Uh, the initial way of doing it uh, just wasn't working. But I did settle into that fairly quickly, uh, and I'm pretty much you know, taking this entire thing and doing this as a dry run. So I've settled in now, and we're at the 90 minute mark, and as you can see, there's still a fair amount of uh, ammonia here. Uh, I'm not the best at color vision, but I'm really just going for a zero test, so you guys can tell me what this is. Uh, it is not at max, of course. Uh, it has been reduced, but obviously not enough to uh, warrant it being gone. So I kept on doing these, uh, and as you can see, at the two-hour mark, uh, again, it is less. And then at the five-hour mark, uh, it is not zero yet. Uh, I think we're in the upper band now, uh, but it's not completely gone. But it was getting to the point in time, I mean, I wasn't planning on this experiment going this long, uh, so I hadn't uh, allotted enough time for this. I actually wanted initially to do two for this particular video, and I'm only going to get to one, and actually I'm not even going to be able to finish that. So after I've uh, processed this video and got it ready and put it up, I'm going to continue doing tests uh, on it until it goes away. And I'll do an update for that for you on Sunday. But at this point, when I'm putting this video up, uh, it is not at zero yet. So and that's at five hours. And hopefully, before I go to bed, I will uh, get a zero reading. But that may not happen either. So this may end up just being a completely uh, and total uh, dry run, uh, which is not 
uh, it's not a, like a complete failure or anything. It is just what it turned out to be. And I will work out all the details, and then we'll get to the point where I can get this to be uh, much more fluid, and hopefully we'll try this again. I may have to, well, actually, I know I will have to add, uh, sorry, buy more of the test kit, because <laughs> I think I went through about three quarters of a bottle uh, in this one. But I'll know better for the next test not to uh, do it every three minutes or every half hour. I will probably uh, redo this one and test it at every hour, and I will test it starting in the morning. And then, uh, again, like I said, I'll run through them all. I will do this one, and then I'll do Undergravel Filter, and then I'll probably do an update for you for that, and then we'll decide how to go from there. But like I said, this, these experiments are interesting because I have actually learned something from it, which is uh, kind of cool. And hopefully you guys have some interesting thoughts on this as well. Uh, definitely share them with me. And as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll get through this. I'll figure some stuff out for it. If you have any ideas, uh, let me know for sure. And uh, I will see you in the next video. And bye for now.